Good morning from Tasmania. As promised, here is my little video to help with your entry to the exhibition called Marking Time, which I've started as a response to emerging from the lockdown that many of us have experienced. And I'd just like to show you some simple techniques using interesting papers or plain papers, whatever you would like, um, and just a simple way to put them together to use for your little notebook that goes with your exhibition. If I have time afterwards, I'll give you a few ideas also about your actual stitched piece. So here is my little notebook that I've started. And it's got a piece of quite thick art paper on the outside that I dip dyed in some natural dye. And then I've made some pages, mostly out of recycled art paper, a thinner variety, because I don't want my book to be too thick. But I've also inserted um, some eco-dyed um, corrugated cardboard which I've peeled a layer and uh, pressed flat so that it's not too thick and I've put one in the middle and one in the front. So you might like to try inserting different papers as well but just make sure that your book won't be too thick. Then what I did was I crunched the holes that I wanted to use for the stitched part with an awl. Now this is an awl um, I purchased this from Bibiani. Prukwambi in Tasmania has a business that provides paper making products. And I've put a cork on the end just to make sure I don't stab myself when I rummage around in my tin for it. If you don't have an awl, that's okay. What I did originally was I used um, an old darning needle, one that was still good, not rusty. And I actually made a hole in the cork and glued it in. I'll just take this other cork off. And what happened was that I actually had an awl made with an, uh, a big needle. And then I used the small cork on the end again so I don't stab myself. So you can actually improvise. Before I go on with the stitching, I'll also mention about the paper edges. I like to have rough edges on my papers. And to do that, I fold them and then I slide an old... Uh, bone handle butter knife into the fold where I want to cut it and it gives me a lovely soft rough edge. The beauty of the bone handle knife is you can also use the end to smooth the fold so you can actually rub it very tightly over this end the edge of the book where it's folded and get your folds nice and flat. I haven't done this with this one um, but I probably will do it. You can do it after stitching as well. And you can see that I've just made three holes in the layers that I've chosen for my book. And what I did was with my needle, it's actually a book binding needle. I have a, a few of those, again, from uh, Puru Kwambi from um, Bibiani. You'll find her online, B-I-B-I-A-N-I. And she has lots of lovely book binding materials. So I use one of these needles, but again, a darning needle will work. And I go through the middle first from the inside and I leave a tail. Then I come through to the outside, as you can see there. Then I go back in um, at this spot here. See if I can maneuver this. So I go back in at this spot, which is the bottom hole. Then it comes out. And then I go back in through the middle, trying not to pierce this thread as I go back through. So then I come out of that hole to the outside and that's partially done as you can see with the needle partly through the top hole. Let's see if I can do this one handed. I don't have a stand for my phone. So I'll try and get it out. And I'll pull it tight but not too tight because you don't want to wreck your paper. And then what I do for the last um, thing is to tie a double knot in the middle and trim the ends. And then I just lay the ends flat like that once it's tight and knotted uh, and trim them off to about two centimetres or so. Now if you want to use um, paper that's already been eco-printed or another paper that you really like, you might just want to leave it as it is, but I feel that this cover needs something else. 
So I've chosen a piece of um, eco-printed paper that I've done. This is quite thin with uh, rose leaves, onion skin and a, little, a few uh, pea flowers which give me that slight blue. And I'm going to put that on the cover like that and I might use either a glue stick like this. You can use different brands, make sure you buy good ones. Some glue sticks are not really much good. Or you can use double-sided tape. I have this nice thin one which is about a quarter of an inch wide. You can buy them from craft stores but you can also buy them from hardware um, stores or the hardware section in your local supermarket. The thread that I use is a waxed linen thread. Again, you can improvise with this, but some threads will shred when you try and stitch with them through paper and cardboard. So waxed uh, thread is very good because it's strong. It also sticks to itself. So when you pull it through the hole and then knot it through the holes and then knot it, um, you can just flatten it with your finger and it just holds really well because it sticks to itself. It doesn't mark your paper at all. I did mention in the guidelines that you might like to try putting found objects in your book or to use for your stitching. And I've just brought a few here to show you. These are ones I've just found recently in my yard and in, my, in the street in front of my gallery. This I think is actually copper. It's an old tie for wiring. So when people used to convert their old houses and wire them, instead of putting the wires inside the wall, they had the wires on the outside of the wall where you could see them and they would pin them down with these. That's my um, surmise anyway. I also found this in my backyard. I washed them because they were a bit dirty. That will um, sit down very nicely either in my book or on my stitching. They can be stitched down. In your book they can be glued down, but you might need to use something a bit stronger than just a glue stick. You can also use double-sided tape for this kind of thing, just trim them to fit. And this is a little plastic paper clip that I found in front of the gallery and that's easy to stitch. And of course you can stitch into your little book too. Just make sure it stays reasonably flat because you want to be able to post it without paying too much extra postage. And just another word about adding this eco print to the cover of my book, my little notebook. I might even stitch it because I like the look of stitch, stitching in paper. So uh, I'll probably pierce the holes first with my awl or my darning needle and, and then stitch it with some uh, contrasting or matching thread from my embroidery stash. Pearl cotton would do very well. Also, um, even thin string would go well. I often leave the ends hanging out too because I like that added texture. So I hope that helps with uh, making your little notebook if you'd like to make your own. Quite a simple way to do it and you can be quite creative with what kind of papers you put in it. But just reminding you again, it needs to be able to be fairly flat so you can post it without paying extra postage. And what I've recommended in the guidelines is that you actually open it out when you, postage, when you post it and lay it flat with your stitched piece um, so that it uh, doesn't add too much bulk. Now I also have some examples of stitching here which might give you some ideas. This one is one that I finished a couple of months ago. You'll notice in the guidelines I mentioned not to make it too thick when you make your stitchery and also not to overthink it. When I did this I just went with the flow. I laid fabrics out, I put stitches in and I didn't think about it too much in advance. I even had a piece of ravelled thread from a piece of material fall on the work and I pretty much left it as it is and stitched it down because I liked how it looked. Tears in the um, material can actually become a feature and I trimmed the threads of this one so you could see the background. Very simple stitches, mainly running stitch. Uh, even for the letters it's a back stitch so very simple. That might be something you might like to incorporate or not. I've done a little bit of needle turn applique, but a lot of the work, I've just left the raw edges. I've also left the raw edges on the outside of the piece. 
so it just adds that extra texture. So this is not the, uh, my entry or my example, but it's just showing you how I work and giving you some ideas on what you might like to try. This is another piece I'm just getting here. This one was actually an old petticoat. You know that um, I love to use recycled materials. The one I showed you first was a bit of old curtainy for the background. This is an old petticoat or slip. I've even left the lace on the edge. And again, just being very random and unplanned, laying pieces of fabric on top, using the, end, uh, the seam ends that I've cut off. There's another uh, seam that I cut off the edge. Torn bits that were left over. And just quite simple stitches, running stitch and cross stitch on this one. And then I thought oh, I'll get a bit more adventurous and I'll put in some herringbone stitch. And if you're not sure how to do these, there are good uh, videos on YouTube that will show you how to do them. But if you're unsure, you can do a lot with just a running stitch. It can be used to outline, it can make grids and patterns. If you like fly stitch like I do, you can add some fly stitch. So just however you feel. And don't overthink it and don't spend hours and hours on it. The idea is a few minutes of daily stitch practice after you've been outside with your little notebook. And just the last piece I'd like to show you. This is another one that I did with a piece of fabric that didn't eco dye very well. So I used it as a background. And I've just added pieces on. This is the top part of a camisole that I cut off. These are nail prints and I've used them for my stitching. So use the um, texture and the pattern in the fabric also to inspire what you want to do as well as your observations from your little time outside and from your notebook. A piece of an old doily or tray cloth. This was a cuff from a shirt. I've left the buttons on it. So again, just keep it fairly flat, fairly simple. Simple stitching, raw or turned edges or a combination of both. This one has all raw edges. And use the pattern on your material as an inspiration. Or you can just do fillers, like I use cross stitches and running stitch here just as a filler. And I've mentioned in the guidelines to just take a line for a walk and see what happens. Most of these things I have no idea what I'm going to do to start with and I just allow the process to lead me. So I hope this is helpful. Remember there is a maximum size and to keep it flat don't worry about exposed stitches on the back. I think that tells part of the story. Leave your knots and your stitching exposed on the back. Don't worry about backing it because again you'll be adding thickness to it and bulk and that's not what we want. It needs to fold up and fit into an A4 envelope. So this is one that I have. That's why I've recommended the size I have because you can fold it two or three times and it will go flat in this envelope with your notebook on top and um, if you've been careful, it will be able to be sent as a letter or a document rather than as a parcel. Please feel free to ask me any questions you have. You have my email address. If you live in Australia, you might like to ring me. Feel free to get in touch and just have fun and go with the flow. Before I close, one last word about threads. I'm using a combination of threads. I have some hand-dyed indigo thread here that was given to me and I also have some vintage wool embroidery threads again given to me by a friend who was de-stashing so they're probably going to be what I'm going to use you can use normal embroidery cotton you can use thread you've dyed you can use plain thread pearl cotton whatever you've got in your stash don't go out shopping and buy a whole heap just for this um, it is difficult in some areas to go shopping anyway so just have fun, enjoy and go with the flow and I hope that this whole process will help you as you work through these big changes that we've experienced in our lives this year. 
Lots of love to you all and uh, looking forward very much to seeing what you come up with with your creative endeavours. Bye for now. <laughs>